This is uh, Jeremiah 7, verse 23. Right. But this thing I commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Right. So God said, Obey his voice. Obey his voice. Black man, where are your fringes at? Where are your beard at? Why ain't you keeping God's commandments? Obey his voice. Read. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. And walk in what? And all the ways that I have commanded you. Walk in all his commandments. Why ain't y'all walk in his commandments? Don't y'all know that means death? Don't y'all know that means destruction? Don't y'all know that y'all lose y'all soul for that? Read. That it may be well unto you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear. But what? In the councils and in the imagination of their evil heart. Right. That's what y'all doing right now. Guess what? No, no, that's not what it's saying. God will still love me regardless. I, I, I can be a drug dealer. God still loves me. I can be a Baptist. God still loves me. I can be a Pentecostal. God still loves me. No, that's your own wicked imagination. I can be a prostitute. God still loves me. No. That's wicked imagination. You trying to cover up your sin. Check this out. Get Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Get that real quick. Because guess what? And then no, actually, go on and get 1 John 3 and 4, then get Romans 6 23. Let's see if this changes in the New Testament. Y'all probably think about, oh, you just read the Old Testament. Where's the New Testament? Let's see if things change. Read. 1 John 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. So let's see who a sinner is. What is a sinner? Read. Transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Right. So whoever sins breaks God's laws. If you're not keeping God's laws, if you ain't got a beard, fringes, wearing royal apparel. Hey, young man, young brother, young brother. You, hey, you think Christ is a white man? Check this out. Today you're going to learn something new. Where's that image at? Bring the image of uh we're gonna bring we're gonna bring the uh the victim. Alright, well let's let's start with this, young brother. Why do you think Christ is white? You said what? You don't know why you think he's white? It's just something you always saw. They said, hey, that's Jesus in movies and cartoons, Facebook, whatever. You just seen this picture, so you thought it was Jesus, right? This picture right here, right? Right? What if I was to tell you, if you did any research at all, that you will find out that this man's name is Cesare Borgia? Bring it up! Right? He was the son of Pope the... Which Pope? Uh, the sixth. Alexander the Sixth. Alexander the Sixth. All right? His, his father, Pope Alexander the Sixth, commissioned uh, Leonardo da Vinci to, to draw him and make him into Christ. All right? Now, your, your next question to me, brother... Because you're my little brother, right? You, you, you are my little brother. So your next question should be, hey, big bro, prove that. Prove what you just said. Prove that this is not the image of Christ. All right? If you say that ain't Jesus, then what did Jesus look like? Because we got to get this mentality. This, what comes with this is a mentality, brother. What's your name? Jackson? Jastin? Right? What comes with this, Brother Justin, is a ideology, a thought, that means that you're not good at all. All right? So we're going to do some comparison. Go to Revelation chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 1 real quick, because I want to make sure that everybody listening understands. All right? Do you go to church at all, Justin? Have you been to church at all? Like, like not, not often? Your parents don't make you go often to church? All right? Sister, do you go to church at all? Sometimes, brother, obviously you go to church, you drive the church van. So, brother, can I ask you a quick question? We're dealing with a young brother right here. His name is Justin. This is Brother Justin, and Brother Justin doesn't know what Christ looks like. Do you know what Christ looks like? You don't know what Christ looks like? I don't either. All right, let's see if I don't know what Christ looks like. This, these are our Christian churches. That read the Bible every Sunday and they say they don't know what Christ looks like. They say they don't know what Christ looks like when it's in there. It's in the Bible. Would you like to learn what, what Christ looks like, sir? Maybe they don't read it in your church. Let's find out together. Come talk to me. Because we're here, we're here to dialogue. We're not here to argue. We're here to build. 
Because maybe you didn't see in the scriptures where it explained what Jesus looked like. And maybe that would be important to you to know what he looks like. But you're getting in a van and you're going to go to church. I can show you what he looks like. All right, give me Revelations 1.14. Don't, come here, Justin. I did that to prove a point, Justin. These are the, your so-called churches. They don't care about you. They, they don't care about your image. They don't care about your, um, your uh, confidence. If you knew Christ looked like this, a strong black man, that would give you more confidence when you walked out in the street. Right. Knowing that Christ looked like me. Right? But yet they let this lie go on. I guarantee you at this church there's a big picture of this. But he says he doesn't know what Christ looks like. Right? That is a lie. I'm going to show you that's a lie, Justin. Read Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Check this out. This is Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So it says the revelation, Justin, of Jesus Christ, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ. So when you reveal something, if I have a revealing of something, what am I doing? I'm about to show it, right? So I'm going to show what it looks like, right? Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it said his hairs and his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, Justin, if you could take off your, your hood real quick. I want to see your hair. What type of hair do you have? Black hair. Alright? Why you why you call it black? Because it's what? It's dark. Okay. So do you know what a um what woolly hair texture is? Alright, do you know what a lamb looks like? You know how a lamb has hair all over its body? Okay, now I want you to imagine the hair that it has on its body. What people on this earth have a hair similar to a lamb? I want you to think about it. Wavy, curly. What, what type of people have that hair? Black people, right? That, this brother, my hair right now, this brother, that brother, we all got woolly hair. Right? Whenever you go, have you seen that movie, uh, The Karate Kid, with with Jaden Smith in it? You 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 remember when he first went over to uh, China? The little girl was like, "Ooh, your hair! I just want to touch it." That's how other nations get about our hair. That's how special our hair is because not everybody has that hair. When people see our hair, they're like, "Oh man." They can have an afro. They got, uh, it naturally curls. It naturally locks. They can get dreadlocks. They love our hair. Right? They hate us, but love our hair. Right? So we have Christ-like hair. So does he have Christ-like hair? Is this woolly? This is not woolly, right? This is stringy. So that's strike one, right? That's strike one. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes as a flame of fire. Is his eyes like a flame of fire? Is his eyes like a flame of fire? What about this one? Right? So it just says when we read in Genesis 49 that Christ drunk wine in moderation. That's why his eyes were red. Okay? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. So, Justin, is your feet the same color as your body? The, your feet is the same color as your body. So do you know what the color of brass is? All right, have you ever seen anything brass, like a penny? Okay, what color is that? Or more, what, what is the color more associated with it? Brown. Okay, so is he the color of brass? This is not the color of brass at all, is it? Is this the color kind of brass? Kind of. Let's see, let's keep reading. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. Anything you burn in a furnace, Jason, is going to be what color? It's going to be black. So it, it, it showed you in the Bible what he looks like, right? That's a good explanation of what Christ looked like, right? Right? So does he look like this at all? So why do you think that they put this up in our churches? It's called white supremacy, right? White supremacy means that they want to oppress you, that they want to be on top of you, that they want to uh, control you. That's how they do it. They do it like this. They say Jesus is white. When in the Bible, you can read that Jesus is a black man. It's simple. You see how easy that was when we read it? 
You mean to tell me that all the people that go to church every Sunday, they don't read that? Do you think that we would be killing each other? You know that we kill each other on the streets, right? You know how hard it is in this, uh, in this community, right? How old are you? You're 13 years old and you're walking on, what is this? 31st in Myrtle. 31st Street in Kansas City, Missouri, is not a good block at all for a 13-year-old to be walking by itself. Normally, there's crackheads over there, right? You know that. Normally, there's drunkards over there. You know that. The damn store over here, this finish line gas station, it has a damn plexiglass where you can't even get past it, right? You got to slide your money in there, and then they turn it or whatever, right? This is not a place for you as a 13-year-old to be walking by yourself. Look at the condition that we in. You know how it go down out here, don't you? You know what to look for. You've heard gunshots. You've seen the drug usage. I know you have. Why do, why are you dealing with that? You think a 13-year-old over in uh, Lee Summit is dealing with the same thing you're dealing with? He don't have to deal with the stress you're dealing with, do you? It get hard sometimes, right? You get mad, right? I understand that you get mad. Go to... um. They lie at the head of the streets. Where is that? Isaiah what? 5120. I'm going to show you something in the Bible. I'm going to show you why you're walking up and down the street. Because I can see the anger in your eyes. I can see the anger that you're feeling. And you don't know where it's coming from. You're just mad. You're mad maybe because you can't get a new pair of Jordans. You're mad maybe because your mom ain't come home. You're mad maybe because you ain't have enough to eat. I understand that. I've been in that position myself, Jasmine. I know exactly what you're going through. You're going through it because these people choose to oppress us, but now we got to stand up and start knowing who we are. Right. The Bible is going to explain who we are. Check this out. You're 13 years old. I know you can understand this. You look like a smart brother. You look like you've been through some things, Jasmine. So I, I know you can understand what I'm telling you. Read. Isaiah 51 and verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. He said, thy sons have fainted. That's what's going on in our community. Our sons have fainted. We have given up. We just like, man, it's whatever. We tried to do the Black Panther thing. They didn't want to respect it. They, they, they sent the CIA and um, COINTELPRO to shut it down. We tried to do marches. And all they did was put us in jail and give us records. We tried to do, um, what else, Brown Berets. We tried to do NAACP. We tried to do Ad Hoc Against Crime. But it's still this thing that's just hanging over us. It's still these problems just hanging over us. Why is that happening, Justin? Because it's going to make you mad. It's going to fill up inside of you the way you feel like you can't do nothing right. And it's just going to build and it's just going to build until you are older, brother, that just feel like you can't, you can't win. But you can win because you being an Israelite is how you win. You keeping God's laws is how you win and they lose. Right? Read. As a wild bull in a nest. Start off. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. It said they lie at the head of all the streets. When you see... I'm not, I know you've seen it before. When you see like the uh, older drunk men sitting out here, they said they lie at the head of the street. That's why we always on the corner. That's why we always in the street. That's why we always walking around, getting into something. That brother right, that brother right there. Look, turn around. The brother in that brown coat. He not going to shop at Happy Foods. He's just standing there. Why? You telling me it's not nothing more positive that we could be doing right now? Then where he just standing outside of a store? We lie at the head of the streets. We fainted because we don't know who we are. So we end up mad because of the oppression that we go through. Read. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. You know how if you put a wild, like if you put a net over a wild bull, it'll just start bucking everywhere, going crazy, trying to get out. That's what our people are like. We just fight in every which and way. We go through Christianity. We go through Muslim. We go through just selling drugs. We go through anything just try to make a way out. Rapping, basketball, football. We just do anything. Anything that's going to get us out of the condition that we in, Jasmine. That's, that's where we are. A wild bull in the net, right? 
They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. That's why you mad. That's why you feeling in your, your in your in your chest. You feeling in your chest like, hey man, when are things gonna get better? When are things gonna get better? Is your dad at home? Your dad's at home? Right? All praises. Because most people don't grow up with dads. I didn't grow up with a dad. And it made me even more angry. It made me so mad. Why why does uh Billy get to have his dad at home, but I don't? Why 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 did he do what he was supposed to do? I'm gonna show you something. Go to Hebrews 13 and 4. And my dad, and my dad, Jackson, would have followed this commandment from God, I wouldn't have been so mad. I would have been okay. Right? Read. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable and all. Marriage is honorable and all. Meaning that if you lie with a woman, you marry her. Right. Don't you think that would cure a lot of the problems we got going on in the black community? With single parents, with, with uh, STDs, with AIDS. We wouldn't have those things if we followed this one commandment that said marriage is honorable and all. And we wouldn't just looking at girls for um, playthings or uh, as harlots, as hoes. We would be a lot far longer in our uh, community. Right? Now, I don't want you to fret because 13 years old, you can understand this Bible. Right, I'm going to show you about some, some young teenagers. Go to Daniel. Uh, is it Daniel chapter 1? Is it 1 about uh, grab the young men that are able to uh, learn? Right, find that for me. Because you, you, just because you're young doesn't mean that you can't do great things with this truth. With the understanding of who you are. So I want you to understand how important you are. You are the most important thing on this earth. Has anybody ever told you that? Your mom, your dad, right? Anybody else? Right? Nobody else, right? Well, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you that the Bible says that you're the most important thing in, on the earth. Right? But you got to believe it. Now, if you're the most important thing on the earth, there's rules that come along with that, right? If you were, if you were a uh, superhero with superpowers, you would have rules that come with those superpowers, right? Like, um, who's a who's a superhero? I can't even remember one. Uh, Superman, right? He lives by a code. He lives by a certain set of rules. He just don't use his powers willy nilly, right? He has a guideline that he follows with that, right? Do you did you find it? All right, check this out. This is Daniel chapter one and verse three, and the king spake unto Ash. Ashpenaz, the this is when we were in captivity in uh, Babylon. Babylon. Right? We in captivity right now. We being oppressed right now. Right? So this is the boys in your same po position in oppression. Read. The master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. That he should bring certain of the children of Israel. We are the Israelites. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites. Right? And of the king's seed and of the princess. Children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom. Well-favored and skillful with all wisdom. You could be that, Jasper. You could be that, right? You could be that for this word. Read. And cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. And right? So it shows that our young men were very smart and very capable. Very capable of understanding. I believe that you're very capable of understanding this Bible, Justin. I believe that you can go articulate what you learn here to your parents. Your parents at home? Or, you know, they'll be at home, at work or something like that. Right? I believe that you can go home and say, hey, mom, dad, I learned that Christ was not a white man. I can show you in the Bible in Revelations. They read it to me. They told me that I was an Israelite according to the Bible. They told me the reason why things are going on in this community is because we didn't keep God's commandments. Hey, Dad, what can we do to do God's commandments? What can we do to, to learn more of this? I believe that you can go to your father and you can tell him that. I believe that you can go to your mother and tell her that. I believe that you can articulate that to your parents. 
to where they would understand and you could grow in this truth. Because we have a school uh, right over on the Kansas side where we teach our young brothers like you how to be how to be better. That brother right there, that brother right there, he started when he was 16, 16, 17. You're not that much far off from him. And that brother is strong in this truth. That brother does a lot of work for this truth, building up his people like you. Right? We got brothers your age at our at our school. 13 years old, going through things. Well, I know what you're going through. Trust me, I know what you're going through. But the thing is, is we have to take the time to understand knowledge. We have to understand who we are first. A lot of kids your age don't care who they are, and I'm going to show you. Go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. All these things are in the Bible. Every last one of these things are in the Bible, Jastin. Every single one that I'm talking to you about. So I'm not just making this stuff up. Everything I tell you, I'm going to read it from the Bible. I don't speak from my own words. I only speak from the Bible. Read. As I said, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's grip. Do you know what an ox is? It's an animal, right? It says an ox knows his owner. So if you take away an ox, he'll know like if, if you put him in front of three people, he'll know who his owner is. It says an ass knows his master's crib, meaning that it knows his way home. Right? Read. But Israel does not know. But Israel, Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they don't know who they are. They have no clue who they are. Read. My people does not consider. They don't even consider. Did you wake up today and say, man, I wonder I wonder what my nationality is. I wonder who I am. You didn't wake up saying that to yourself today. You didn't wake up saying, hey, I wonder, I wonder where my people come from. That'd be a good, that, let, me, let me do some Google research. You didn't think about that today. You should probably think about the NBA All-Star game or something, right? Right? So that's the Bible coming to fruition. He said, my people don't even think about, don't even care about who they are. All our people right here, we got people standing right here. We got the sister uh, unloading her groceries in the car. You think they thinking about who they are according to the Bible? They thinking about the bills they got to pay next week. They thinking about how they going to keep their kids alive if they get pulled over by a police officer. They, they start thinking about everything else that's going on around them. They don't even think about who they are and how important it is. They thinking about Trump. They thinking about President Obama. Right? They think about all these different things except for who they are. When if they thought about who they were, they would come back to God's commandments and realize the power that's in God's commandments. When we follow God's commandments, Justin, nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. You heard about that movie, Black Panther? You want to go see that movie? You don't? Why you don't want to go see it? You just don't want to see it? No, no particular reason? Is it because everybody else want to see it, you don't want to see it? You just what? Just not something you're planning on doing, all right? Do you know we got superheroes in the Bible? Yeah. We got superheroes in the Bible. One of them's name was David. One of them's name was David. When he was about your age, he killed a, a grown man. Can you imagine you having to fight him? Look at how big this brother is. Look at him. Look at how big and mean this brother look right here. Could you imagine if you had to fight him? Do you think you could beat him up? Do you think you could? I mean, I'm honestly asking you a question. Do you think you could beat this man up? Your, your forefather did. Your forefather, David, he did, the, he did the exact thing. And he wasn't scared at all. He stood up mightily. He said... Hey, I'm going to do this for a most high God and for my family. Who should I be afraid of? I keep the commandments. I can I can win because I keep the commandments. That's, that's the spirit that our people rode in. We didn't have fear. We wasn't scared at all. We wasn't scared of nothing. Now we scared of everything. We, we, we scared of every. We scared to stand up. We scared to say that the white man oppressed us. If I was to say that right now, everybody would be like, shh, shh, don't say that. Don't say that. If I was to say the white man is the devil, everybody out here would be like, hey, bro, hey, uh, uh, don't say that. Be cool, bro. Be cool. Don't start nothing. Right? Scared. 
We can't roll in the spirit of fear, Jason. We got to start waking up to the knowledge of who we are and keeping God's commandments. They have to be number one. Do you know what a commandment is? You don't know what a commandment is. I'm going to show you one commandment. Give me Numbers 1538. Because yep. I want to show you that we keep the commandments. And you should be keeping the commandments too. Check this out. Numbers 15 verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. This is what this is. This is fringe. Alright? This is fringe on the borders of our garment. Right? Read. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. When it says throughout their generations, that means as long as Israel is a nation, which we are a nation to this day, that we should be keeping this commandment. Wearing fringes on our clothes. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And that we put on a port, uh, upon the fringe a ribbon of blue. You see that ribbon of blue? Right? That's a commandment. Why is it a commandment? Why would God say, hey, I want you to wear this. I want you to look like this. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So we're supposed to wear these fringes as a reminder for us to keep the commandments at all times. Right? To remember who we are. That's what we lost, Justin. When we don't keep God's laws, we lose. When we keep God's laws, we win. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for you. All right? Do you think that you can articulate that to your mom and your dad, what you learned about Christ? Christ is not a white man. Right. He is a black man. That's right. right? He is one of your forefathers. You understand? You got to have pride in that, Justin. You got to have pride in that. Don't let nobody ever tell you that Christ was a white man. Right. If you ever in a place where Christ is a white man, you shouldn't be there. Right. If they got white pictures of Christ on the wall, you should not be there. Because they're in the spirit of falsehood. They're, not, they're teaching you lies. They're trying to keep you oppressed. Do you know what oppressed means? A little bit? What, what does it mean? Huh? Hidden? Uh, kind of, kind of. Oppressed means more of, uh, you got it? Get it. It's Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 1. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressors there was power, but they had no comforter. Right? So on the side of your oppressor is power. And we have no comforter. Meaning that when you're oppressed, somebody has power over you. They have power over you. The so-called white man in America has power over us. Right? Do you understand that? Right? You've seen that with like Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice was 13 years old, wasn't he? Tamir Rice, you heard about that story a couple years ago? Tamir Rice was your age right now. Can you imagine... Walking down this, this street, which is a, a dangerous street, with your hood on like you did when you was walking up. You had your hood on. And could you imagine a cop just jumping out the car and shooting you and saying that you're a grown man, saying that they fear for their life from you? That's called oppression. That's oppression, that they had the power to do that and then be, then be held not guilty. Right? So you as a young man, you had the ability to say, look, I understand that Christ is a black man. I understand that he's not a white man. I understand that I'm an Israelite. I understand that I got to keep the commandments. All right? You got to do this, bro. Because if you don't do this, the, the, the wages for sin are death. That's why we're in this oppressive state right now. That's why we can't get ahead right now. You got it? Read. This is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. So this is how we put on the armor of God. By keeping his commandments. Right. By keeping his commandments. Simple and plain. Right? We have to keep God's commandments. Don't steal. Don't kill. We know those. But what about um, keeping the high holy days? Did you know that uh, do you celebrate Christmas? Do you know that's a sin to God? To celebrate Christmas? I'm going to show you real quick. Real quick. Give me that. Jeremiah 10. I'm going to show you that it's up. How you doing, brother? 
All right, bro. I'm going to show you that it's a sin to, 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 to follow Christmas. All right? Read. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. It's a sin to celebrate Christmas. Yes, it is. It's in the Bible. Uh, Christmas is not about Christ's birthday. It's not about his birth. It's not about none of that. Read. Hear ye the word of the of which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. So he's giving us a commandment. He's saying, Learn not the way of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree. So here's where it gets to the point. For one cutteth a tree. Read. Out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They so they take an axe and they cut down a tree. They deck it with sit with silver and with gold. They deck it with silver and with gold. So what 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 uh, holiday do you do that? Where you take a tree and you deck it with silver and gold? That's Christmas. Didn't he just tell us not to do that? So why do our people do it every single year? Why? These are simple things the Bible is telling us not to do, but yet we do them every single day, year after year. We have to break that cycle. We got to break that cycle. Do you understand that, Jaston? All praises, brother. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.